Nick Gallo, KC Thunder. Um, Shay, I'll start with you and I'll ask Aaron the same question. But you were in the action with J Dub on that uh, last shot. Um, what's your feeling going into the play and um, kind of knowing that you're going to set uh, Jalen up for, for one of his patented looks? Yeah, um, I just wanted to. Uh, obviously, I have high gravity out there. Um, I just wanted to use it in that situation and uh, try to confuse the switch, confuse the defense, and get him a, a look that he's he's comfortable shooting. Usually the number one hype man for, for other guys. What's that like for you all to to mob him um, after Shea kind of completes the, the the win there? Yeah, uh, I mean, just happy to see him, you know, come through in a big moment. Um, you know, he's made that shot tonight, you know, a lot of times. So I think he was comfortable, confident shooting it. And, you know, it was it was fun being able to, you know, go out there, seeing him succeed in that moment. So. And then, Shea, you know, you guys didn't necessarily have, like, your A-plus game tonight on both ends. What did you like about the response out of halftime to, to hold those guys to 43 points and kind of just uh, get it done the way you needed to? Yeah, um... We uh we, we play in the best league in the world, um, so no matter what the team's record or how they look on paper, it's the best basketball players in the world, um, and they can come out any night and win a game, no matter let, no, no matter their record or, or who's on their team. Um, and we we knew that going into the game. They're a hungry team, a young team, a talented team, despite what their record says, and um, we wanted to we knew. That was most likely going to be a 48-minute game, um, and tonight it definitely was for sure. Um, we're just happy to be on the, the winning end of it. Shay, uh, seemed like you guys were kind of searching for someone to come in and give you guys a spark. Aaron did that for you guys tonight, and not just him, but guys like Keontae and Bertans. Can you just talk about the effort that they gave you guys and the spark they gave you guys? Yeah, um, I always say those guys are in like the toughest position in the NBA, not knowing when minutes are going to come, where they're going to come, how many. Um, and just having to always be ready yeah, in every situation, um, with no like a hundred. Like every night I go to bed, I know how much I'm gonna play tomorrow, how many times I'm gonna touch the ball. Um, and those guys aren't in that position, and they're always ready and, and um, always helping the team. And Wiggs is a, a prime example of that. But we have guys that are, are like that across the board. Aaron, I mean, knowing you guys needed a spark, can you just talk about your mindset coming into the game to provide a spark? I mean, just being some sense of energy, uh, uplifting the team. Um, you can kind of feel and sense, you know, when we might not be on our A game, you know, from the jump. So uh, knowing, you know, when the opportunity comes to make sure you're, you know, just kind of providing some sense of energy on the, the side of the game that you can control. And that's m primarily defensively. And uh, when you're doing a good job with that, I mean, you know, everything else works itself out. So the offensive end kind of comes together. So just knowing that, you know, you got to take advantage of the opportunity and uh, provide some type of energy. Um, Shay, you know, Dub hits this game winner. This isn't the first time that he's done something like this. But you've also had Chet hit a big shot in Golden State this year. Josh hit a big one last year in New Orleans. Lose hit a game winner. Like, what does it say about this team, just their readiness and clutch time? And I know you've talked about trusting your teammates, but just being able to count on them and not just throughout the game, but in clutch moments, what does that mean? Yeah, um, we we have a group of guys that, that work super hard um, and it makes it easy to trust them. Uh, they're guys that work hard and, and want to end up at the end of the day win and be the best versions of themselves. Um, and when you guys, when you know guys have that on their mind um, and your best interest, all that other stuff comes easy. Aaron, I want to ask you about getting out in the open floor and in transition. You had a sequence tonight where I think J-Dub got a long rebound, and it seemed like you were already in the front court uh, for a kick-ahead pass. When offense isn't maybe going your way as a team, is that something that you really try to, to fire out and do to, to ignite things? Um, I think it's just reads. I mean, we, we have a, you know, an identity defensively on how we want to play, and uh, – I don't know. I just try to be aware of like you know what's happening on the defensive end. So like whether it's a rebound or a steal, um, if I feel like you know one of our guys has it, I want to try to get out and create uh, an advantage on the you know tr in transition. So uh, it was a couple times tonight where I felt like you know we had an opportunity to kind of get an easy bucket. So uh, I found myself uh, you know ahead of the defense and you know trying to just find something easy. So that's all it is. 
Shade, <clears throat> Chet had six blocks tonight, three in the fourth quarter. Obviously, he wasn't able to play last season, but just having him here, just how much has he really changed the, the dynamic of this defense? Yeah. Uh, um, it's it's hard to put into words, but he is like he clearly changes um, and takes us to a whole other level. Um, the addition of him, um, as well as guys getting better, is the big reason why we're having this much success. Uh, and obviously, he does so many good things on the court offensively, um, but him defensively is. It's his biggest, his biggest attribute, and he he brings it every night, um, and we're lucky to have him for sure. Last question, Riley. Aaron, whenever Kanthi was down with the Blue, he said that you know he was in contact with you and some of the other players who had been down there before. What is it like for you to kind of take on that leadership role, and what have you seen from Keontae specifically? Um, I mean, you know, Keontae was a guy. He was in college for a couple of years, so just coming in, I think his maturity and just like you know understanding of like. Um, just like who he was as a player and stuff was kind of natural. So, uh, you know, me being in the same position, you know, coming in on a two way, trying to find a way to, you know, contribute to an NBA team and like, you know, find a spot. Um, it was just, you know, I want to see other guys succeed. Um, so when he, you know, kind of came in, I just told him like, you know, stay the course, trust the process, um, you know, learn the way that, you know, we want to play and, you know, you'll get the opportunity. and. Uh, I mean, even with – he had a short couple minutes tonight, but with his minutes, I thought he did a good job. I mean, he was in the right spots. He made good plays. Um, and, you know, it just shows that, you know, he has an understanding of, you know, where where he can contribute, you know, starting and, uh, you know, how he can, you know, be a factor. So, Nick Gallo, KC Thunder. Uh, Jalen, you know, late-game situations like the one tonight can be you know, tense. Everybody's really competitive. <clears throat> Everybody, you know, would want that last shot. What do you think about the way that you guys, all, you know, all five of you on the floor, everybody on the bench, like locked in and just executed their roles on on those types of plays? Um, yeah, we we work on those late game situations uh, a lot in practice to kind of end them. So, um, kind of speaks to the level of focus that we have every day during practice to be able to go through that as a young team uh, and understand how important those are. Uh, Mark always says, you know, when we're in games we're going to want to win them so um it's good to have the mental focus that we have going into these these practices to be able to kind of come out here and execute down the stretch you've talked a lot about Aaron and the way that he's able to jump in in kind of a hard role but another guy who's done that especially recently is Jay Will um what have you thought of the way that he's been able to to compete and like get get all of uh, his game into the game um yeah he's a pro's pro uh he's ready to play every night depending on no matter what his minutes look like so you know big salute to him he understands the role that he's coming into play uh consistently for us um, and he embraces it uh, which is hard to do especially you know in your second year um you know he always has a good attitude whenever he's not playing or when he is so he he definitely is kind of one of the hearts of the team so uh, it's always big props for him we know what we're going to get from him on a consistent basis and you know he embraces that not the best shooting night. Uh, can you talk about the mindset to just forget about all that when you're taking that last shot? Shoot or shoot. Um, this shot I work on a lot, so coach drew the play up for me to shoot it. It's a little more free, like it's like my mind is a little more free just because it's a tie game, so it's like worst case, you know, you get to go to OT. But, yeah, um, coach had faith in me to kind of get to the spot I wanted to get to and make the shot. Uh, I got in a lot of looks early that I liked in the game that I just were short, so. Um, try to put a little extra legs in it. And yeah, it's just a shot I've worked on a lot. And then it seemed like you guys were searching for a spark early on, and uh, guys like Aaron came in and gave you guys that. Can you just talk about uh, the lift that he gave you? Yeah, Aaron, uh, same kind of thing as Jay Will, always ready to play. Um, one of the things that makes the team go, uh, you have guys like Key, uh, Davis that came in, gave us good minutes. Kind of just looking for a spark because, you know, it's a long season. There's going to be games like that where it's hard to kind of find rhythm and, you know, kind of like an energy boost. So guys like that that are able to kind of come in, regardless of what's been going on in the season, and come in and compete and give us that spark. And, you know, they got the game tied. I, mean, I actually think they took the lead um, at one point. So just keeping the game close, uh, salute to them. They do a good job of coming in being ready. They're always in that, like, high-intensity group just to kind of stay ready during practice. And, you know, it shows when they're able to come out in the game and play. 
the, is the shot more satisfying considering you guys are kind of battling uphill the whole game? I mean, you know, just trying to get there, didn't play your, your A game, but this one maybe a little, maybe not mean more, but more satisfying. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I shot like trash, so, um, you know, it's nice to that be the shot that goes in. Uh, like I said, I think I got a lot of good looks that I usually make, um, which made it a little more annoying during the game. But defensively, I thought we did a really good job as a team, you know, kind of collecting stops um, and keeping that game very winnable. And, um, you know, I think offensively made as a team, we made a lot of big plays down the stretch as well to kind of keep the game close. And then obviously for me to be able to knock it down was pretty, pretty satisfying. What's it also say the fact that, you know, you've been good in the fourth quarter uh, for several games, but you got Shea, who's your leading scorer, but you make the winning, the winning shot or whatever, the lead that gives you the lead. In terms of team preparing for you down the stretch, they can't just look to SGA. There's you, there's other guys that can make plays. Uh, yeah, it just speaks to our team. Like you said, there's a lot of guys that make a lot of big shots and, um, you know, have big shot capability. Uh, obviously, Chet hit a couple this year already, uh, especially in Golden State. So guys are ready to make big, big shots and big plays. But um, basketball doesn't come down to like the last shot ever. So um, there was a lot of plays down the stretch defensively that we did a really good job with in order to kind of keep the game close. And uh, Shea makes a free throw to tie it. So um, there's a lot of big plays throughout the game that I thought we did a good job with um, that kind of led to that shot. Deb, it's sort of been talked about your fourth quarter scoring, crunch time scoring. You've been among top of the league since the uh, start of the new year, and you hit the game-winning shot tonight. There's a lot of talk about like a clutch gene or things like that. Do you think that's something that guys are like born with for late game situations, or is that something that's sort of developed over a basketball lifetime? Good question. I don't know. Um, I think some of it's just how hard you prepare up until that point to kind of get in those situations. Um, just speaking from experience, um, being able to kind of get to that spot is something, like I said, that I work on a lot. Um, so I think when you figure out what you want to do, I feel like that makes you more comfortable. So I don't know if it's a clutch gene or um, stuff like that, but I just think when you're able to put yourself in those positions, you know, on the off season and stuff like that, I think it gives you a better chance to make them down the stretch. Nick Allo, KC Thunder. Uh, Mark Jadub said that you know you trusted him late, despite him not you know having his best game prior to that. Um, what what do you sense that it means to these guys that um, you know it doesn't matter how the the forty seven minutes went before um, that you you want to go with these guys in, in certain moments? Um, well, I think you know I thought the guys collectively did a really good job of hanging in there tonight, uh, and he in particular, I was pretty impressed, especially in the second half with the way the engagement he had, you know, in that game. Uh, despite us not having a great night, him not having a great night, uh, he was really trying to find it from an effort standpoint uh, and stayed in it the whole time. And when guys do that, you know, they're, no, we're not always going to play perfect, but uh, when they stay in it, it's easy to stay in it with them. So. And it, second half, I think you hold them to 43 points. They had 38 in the second quarter alone, um, kind of in that theme of hanging in there. What defensively were you all able to do to just – slow them down and not let that hot quarter turn into a, a hot second half too. Yeah, we, we tightened it up a little bit there on a night where we obviously just had a hard time finding a rhythm offensively. Some of that was us uh, and some of that was them. You know, They really showed up and played tonight and did a really nice job. They were really tough to compete against. Put a ton of pressure on us, obviously. You know, um, So I, we had to lean on our defense in the second half and our effort and our energy. And like I said, I didn't think we had that in the first half for whatever reason. Uh, but the guys did a good job of trying to like work themselves into the game, and we found that in the second half and, and got tough. What'd you uh, think about the uh, the way you guys stayed poised, uh, fall back through their physicality and everything tonight? Yeah, I thought it, it, we we fought through a lot tonight. You know, um, got off to a really good start in the game, and then uh, had a really bad second quarter all the way around. Um, trail at halftime. I thought we we did a good job of resetting at halftime and just trying to tap into our energy and, and our effort. And I thought we leaned on the right things tonight, you know, and on a night where obviously it wasn't perfect. Uh, and we played a really good opponent, you know, that, that put a ton of pressure on us. So, um, you know, I give our guys credit. I thought we just hung in there mentally. And like I said, we, we bet on the right stuff. And it seemed like you guys were searching for someone to give you some type of spark. And Wiggs came in, gave you that. What did you think about his, his performance tonight? I thought he was really good. Yeah, I thought 
um, really, especially in the second half. I mean, he brought a lot of juice uh, offensively, defensively, plays the system on both ends of the floor, you know, cold, really, really good there. Uh, and we needed everybody tonight. You know, obviously, you know, we were searching for it a little bit in the first half. Um, and then I thought even the, you know, Davis and Keontae didn't know they were going to play there. Neither did I. Uh, and they went in there and gave great effort, you know, in those last four minutes of the second quarter, kept us afloat there going into halftime. Um, and then everybody kind of drummed it up in the second half. Mark, a real easy narrative to look at would be, you know, that you've, you've beaten this team really badly a couple of times. You missed like 10 free throws. Was Did you see any lack of focus to start or, or as the game went on, certainly not to start? Definitely not to start. Um, no, I think our guys respect the opponents. You know, we, we talk all the time about, um, you know, there's 82 wins and 82 losses on the schedule. You can win or lose any night. Uh, they have respect for those players. They know who those players are. And, um, you know, we knew we were going to have a tough opponent tonight. We didn't come in expecting an easy game. So, um, and it wasn't. You know, they, they played really well. They were playing well coming in. I thought the guys were aware of that. Uh, and these are some of the tests that we're going to have to go. But I didn't think we played um, in a disrespectful way at all. I just thought we didn't play great. In, in just looking at it, it looked like they were pretty physical with you guys on the perimeter. Did you Was it maybe more than normal? Um, yeah, I thought, you know, the game was called uh, a little loose there. Um, but on both ends, you know, I thought we were able to – I thought they were consistent. But I thought, you know, there was a lot of contact allowed in the game. Um, and, I, you know, they were physical with us. You know, give them credit. They did a really good job. We're going to see a lot of different things. Uh, we've had a lot of conversations about schemes, but the other thing uh, teams are going to try to do to us is touch us up and beat us up. And I thought they tried to do that tonight, and we got to be able to kind of, you know, bust through that. Chet had five blocks. Shea had five steals. In a one possession game, how big are those kind of adding up and, and having a team that takes pride in getting things like that? Yeah, I mean, all the defensive stuff added up tonight, you know. Um, that stuff, obviously, but also all the invisible stuff. You know, I thought we had some great rotations. I thought we made them earn, especially in the second half. We really made them earn it. They made some tough plays and tough shots, but everything they got for it pretty much was earned uh, after a second quarter where a lot of it was unearned. And so, um, like I said, I thought we, we really tapped into our effort and our energy and our, our grit on the defensive end of the floor tonight. Last year you talked about how you wanted them to be in specific moments. Uh, how much – of that carried over to this year, like a moment like this game where you beat a team uh, by a record number last last time you played them, and then they come in and play you guys much more tougher. Yeah, I mean the guys do a great job of um, you know uh, tapping into what the challenges are, and every game presents challenges. There's no such thing as an easy game in the NBA, and the guys do a great job of uh, internalizing that and getting themselves ready to play. Um, and they also do a great job of learning lessons over time. And we've been in a ton of situations uh, the last couple of years. And most of our guys have been with us. We have great continuity. And so, um, you know, we, uh, we've learned lessons and we've applied them forward. And, you know, that's how you get wiser, how you get uh, more confident, you know, in pressure situations. I thought our poise and confidence tonight, we were as poised and confident as we were all night, you know, in the last six to ten minutes of that game. Mark, a couple of plays. Could you just kind of walk through the, the play, the, the J-Dub shot, what, what you were looking for there? The final one? Mm -hmm. uh, just a last shot situation, you know. Knew that uh, Shea would would um, draw a lot of attention, um, you know, on a kind of a false action there. Um, he had just made one before that um, and decided to go to him. You know, he, he, you know you're going to get a shot with him. You know, he can rise up and, and get a ball on the rim. Uh, we had Chet in rebounding position. Um, that was it, you know. Thought, like I said, I thought he was really engaged in the game, and so I, I, that was why I went to him. And then on the last play, um, you, you know, your, your your point guard or whatever position you want to call him jumps up and, and steals the lob on that last play. What what what, what did you see there? Yeah, I mean, um, we know that's something they could go to. Uh, tough situation, you know, what you do with Chet on that one, whether you put him on the ball or whether you put him at the rim. With two seconds, they could get a catch and shoot. We opted to put him on the ball. Did the same thing in the Milwaukee game last year. We fouled Lopez in that same situation. So I thought good discipline to get everything switched. We switched everything before it came in. Um, the guys are aware that if, you know, if Aiton's on the court standing at the top of the key, there's a good chance that they're going to try to do something to the rim. So Shea, you know, like Daniel's question, it's been in a lot of those situations. He probably sniffed that out a little bit. Well, um, we'll go here first. Go ahead, um, so uh, obviously, it, tonight wasn't a three-point shooting 
game. Uh, but uh, many players have improved uh, three-point percentage this season. Yep. And how much do you think Chip England had had impact on that? And then we've seen like uh, he's helping, he's practicing with Josh Giddy all the time. But uh, like how much actually he helped other players as well? Yeah, no, he's been a huge addition. I think he's got a lot of wisdom, a lot of confidence, obviously, in that area of the game. Uh, you can't, you know, have this type of improvement without broadening out uh, to a lot of different people, starting with the players. You know, the players are the ones putting the work in. They're the ones that uh, are sweating in the summertime and before practice and all that. It always starts with them. And I would broaden it to the rest of our staff. Our whole staff works with our whole roster. Um, you know, they split up the players. There's a lot of different people touching our players uh, with their shooting in all parts of their game. You know, Trip, Chip's been a great addition, obviously, but it's never one thing, you know, and um, it's never one person. Uh, and like I said, the people that deserve the most credit are the guys because they're the ones that are sweating. Jalen's been good for you in the fourth quarter. We often talked about that, but I think most people say, hey, Shea gets that last shot. What does it do when he takes the last shot and how it makes it tough for you guys to prepare for in a similar situation? Yeah, it's a big picture thing. You know, obviously Shea's been in those situations before. I clearly trust Shea in those situations. Um, like I said, I thought uh, we could use him on that play to, to draw some attention away from Jalen. Jalen has just made one. Um, you know, Chet had the shot in Golden State. We've gone to Jalen other times in those situations. Um, you know, in the last minute of games, uh, Denver on the road was one uh, where he ended up in a two for one situation getting one for us. So. You know, I think establishing multiple threats and being a team that's dynamic, you know, we don't want to be a team that is predictable and a team that uh, is easy to prepare for. And we want our opponents to have to account for all of our players based on their strengths. And, you know, Jalen's clearly shown uh, the ability to create his own shot. Um, and so we're willing to use him in those situations. Also, I know you've got San Antonio tomorrow night, robbery, what they call it on the TV. You know, make a big deal about Chet and Wemby playing against each other. Do you ever, how do you keep that just being another game? And of course, I know Chet doesn't talk about the whole thing, but when he and Wendy, it's talked about they're competitive guys. How do you keep that from not being a thing? Yeah, I, we really don't address it just because um, we don't want to breathe oxygen into it. You know, um, we're focused on the game, we're focused on the team. I always think those situations that when they get built up, I understand why it happens, but it's kind of, um, you know, it's disres not disrespectful, but it, it, it really undermines the rest of the, you know, 34 guys that are participating in the game. And, um, you know, we're focused on our entire team. And Chet's been great with that this season. You guys were down three with 30 seconds left and elected to go for two. Is there sort of a line of demarcation or philosophy on when to extend the game with two or when to go for the three? Uh, again, we want to be unpredictable. You know, we want to be a team that, you know, can do either. Um, you know, not necessarily going for two there. You know, we're just trying to get an attacking action that can get us either a clean shot, you know, downhill, get fouled, clean jump shot, or maybe they mess up a coverage and you can get a crack and shoot a three. Um, but with timeout, you know, we had another timeout. Um, we also, it puts game pressure on the opponent. You know, it cuts into the lead. Twos tend to be easier in that situation to get because the other team doesn't want to give up a three. Um, you know, and I thought our execution coming out of that play was really good. You know, we got ourselves set, we got matched, we got we set two different traps, forced a double dribble, got the ball back without having to foul. You know, and um, it's hard. You know, when that team's got the ball with, I think it was a one second differential, they got it with 26 seconds. They're going to have to like play against pressure for 24 seconds, 25. You know, uh, we'd foul before that, probably like 20 seconds of pressure, um, which is not easy to do. And so. It puts game pressure on the opponent. Um, we had a similar one with these guys last year. The one I think the game Shea hit the shot. Uh, there was a turnover in the backcourt. Just you know, similar situation where we're just settled down trying to get a stop. So um, it's different every night. We'll go for three sometimes, but tonight decided to try to get downhill. Coach, you mentioned that um, uh, Jalen had hit a mid-range pull up there earlier in the game. He also missed, I think, three of them earlier in the game. So what was your confidence level just from this game perspective of him taking that exact shot? Yeah, it's not like a hot hand thing. Um, like I say, like a lot of times in a, on a night like tonight when everything's, you know, seemingly going against you, um, you know, looking for, you know, our team to work through it. And he in particular, I thought, was really trying to work through it. He came out at halftime. He flushed the first half um, and really was just playing the next play really hard and really competitively. Um, there was a play in front of our bench where, 
you know, he he should have had a steal. He like missed time to jump and it was out of bounds. And he was I, the reaction he had, you would have thought he just like dropped the game winning touchdown. You know, like he was really into the game. So um, when the guys hang in there, it's easy to hang in there with them. It's that simple. You know, and our guys hung in there tonight, so we hung in there with them.